Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1.6 scale Armortech M4A4 Sherman tank. Since the last update video, progress has been made to the model's smoke system. The model smoke system has been added as well as some other functions have been added as well. We'll be going over these features in this video. Moving on to the model smoke system. For this build, I used the smoke system that is offered by ArmorTech instead of using the typical Harbor model system that I've used in previous builds. The reason why I went with the ArmorTech unit for this build is that the ArmorTech option pack and power control module is designed to use the ArmorTech design smoke system. Because of that, it's all plug and play, and no modifications need to be made to the power supply, which is necessary to do with if you're using a non ArmorTech smoke system. The ArmorTech system is a nicely designed system in that it's very similar to the Harbor Models unit, in that you have the reservoir on the bottom, which contains a tube that the heating filament gets slid into. It uses a blower fan as opposed to a regular PC fan which is similar also to the harbor uh, the harbor model unit and but what's unique about it is that the unit is all made out of CNC aluminum with the exception here of this plastic frame which is only used to secure the motor or the fan to the mount another thing that I like about the armor tech system is that you have three different options on how to have the smoke emit from the unit. You can either have it emerge from the side, the front, or the top. Depending on how you fit the unit into the tank depends on how you would organize the smoke emitter. That there is a nice touch in that it gives you a lot more versatility and flexibility as opposed to some of the other units that are around. In addition to the hardware that we see here, like I mentioned before, the unit is all pre-wired and comes ready to install out of the box. After the unit is assembled, it is a simple plug and play installation inside the vehicle. One thing that's a nice feature of the smoke system is that it has a power cutoff switch for the element. By doing this, you can run your tank without having the smoke system being used which will in turn save wear and tear on the heating element, which will make it last longer. Another feature that this set has that's a nice feature and that's not found on other smoke systems is that of a refueler valve. As I mentioned before, these three locations here are where the smoke emits from the generator, while this tube over here is for refilling of the reservoir. Most smoke systems that you see on the market only have one tube that or one inlet which is serves both functions to refill the smoke system as well as to emit the smoke out once the filament is activated. Because the ArmorTech has a dual feed system it makes hooking up the refueler system to this tank a lot easier. Now most people they just have a gravity fed system in fact ArmorTech comes with a gives you a little piece of rubber tubing in for which you just gravity feed the the fluid into the reservoir when needed. However, like on most of my builds, I will be having an onboard fuel pump which will facilitate refueling of the smoke system with a lot more efficiency. To actually create the heat, the smoke system utilizes a very powerful industrial soldering iron style filament. The filament itself gets inserted into this brass tube which enters into the reservoir. Now what is not shown in this scene here because it's already assembled is that inside the reservoir there is a long hollow machine brass tube and wrapped around that tube is a cloth matting. The purpose of the matting is that the matting absorbs the smoke fluid which gets pumped into the reservoir and once the filament gets hot, the heat radiates through the brass tube into the matting and causes the smoke to be emitted and to get blown out of the smokestack via the fan. The filament simply gets inserted into this place here. However, to help keep it in the spot, I'm probably going to tack it on with a little dab 
of silicone. Silicone itself should not burn off in that this part here is where the connections are and doesn't radiate any heat. Also, the silicone is not a permanent bond, so in case if I ever have to remove the filament for any reason, I will be free to do so without having to cause permanent damage to the unit. In addition to coming with everything that you see here, the set also supplies you, the builder, with several pieces of plumbing fittings, as well as two PVC tubes. With the supplied PVC tubes, as well as the fittings, it gives you, the model maker, enough components to plumb your smoke system in any way which you deem fit. Another add-on that I will be adding to this vehicle that has been highly recommended is that of the smoke system fan control module. This fan control module here is actually an aftermarket component which is offered at the following email listed below. This little power box here is a simple drop-in addition that connects the Armortech smoke system to that of the Ben & Denny sound system. With the purpose of this is that you get nice throttle control that matches that of the engine sound either throttling up or idling and will emit the amount of smoke necessary when the engine is prefer performing those roles. What was fabricated to connect to the Armor Tech system was that of the actual smoke exhaust manifolds that we have here. The smoke manifolds are actually modified from the EastCoastArmory.com Resin M4 Sherman smoke, ma smoke exhaust manifold set. That set contains the two funnel exhausts along with a bracket mechanism and a mounting plate which replicates the type of system which is found on the M4 Sherman that is equipped with the radial engine. Because this tank is radio controlled, the, the solid resin smoke manifolds had to have been modified. What was kept from the original set was that of the triangular deflector that we have here. The solid resin unit was milled out, so that's nice and hollow, and will allow the smoke to exit through the manifold system and will help with its deflection. As for the, the necked tube, that there is aluminum and has been bent and pressed into shape, as well as the PVC plug ring that we have here, which was modified from the kit supplied PVC tubes that were shown earlier. As for the middle section that we have here, that middle section is actually brass and, believe it or not, is made from a spent 8mm Mauser shell casing. The 8mm Mauser shell casing was perfect for that it was the same exact size of the tube, where it just slipped right into where the projectile used to be, and the body of the casing fits nice and snug with that of the PVC tube. The shell casing was cut, the back portion was discarded, and the unit was then fully assembled. After the unit was assembled, it received its, weather, its rusty weathering that we have here, and exhaust soot will be airbrushed onto the unit after the model is completed. It is at this stage now to which I mount on the doors. The doors, as we recall from a previous video, are the Armor Tech kit originals and have been reworked to give them a little bit better surface detailing. The doors are fully functional and mount to the tank the same way they do on the real tank and that is by several fasteners. The two top and bottom fasteners secure this latch here to the rear wall while these two fasteners here keep the doors connected to each other. Also, as we recall, in addition to modifying the doors, the interior portion of the engine hatch was also enlarged from the kit original. Having the doors functional is a nice little touch on the model in that in case I ever need to film the vehicle with the engine doors open, say for diorama use, I have that option. And here goes the smoke system in its completed form. Starting with the 
funnels. The funnels have been assembled and mounted to the rest of the smoke system plumbing. In addition to the funnels, the meshwork has also been added. The meshwork was described in a previous video and is what separates the exterior from the interior of the vehicle in this location here. For the installation of the meshwork that has been done with small sections of silicone which were spot glued on to various sections of the rim. Purpose of using silicone for not only the grill work but also the plumbing is because like I mentioned earlier the silicone gives me a nice sturdy mounting point however is not permanent enough in case I might have to get access to the smoke system I can take and disassemble the entire unit without having there be any permanent damage. To refuel the system I went ahead and utilized the standard technique that I use on all of my radio controlled vehicles and that is of a built-in in-tank refueling system. For the refueling system I use a radio controlled fuel pump. The electric fuel pump is, 24, is 12 volt powered and is powered by the main batteries. It is patched into the same power usage as the smoke system itself. The smoke, the recharger or the refueler system utilizes a long tube that once the tank is assembled will emerge from the vehicle in order for me to refuel the smoke system. The purpose of the external long tube is because the fluid itself can be harmful to the model's finish so by, by moving the tube far away from the tank for the refueling I go ahead and minimize any type of spillage that can possibly occur if the refueling was done in a closer proximity to the vehicle. Like I mentioned, the refueler is facilitated by this simple toggle switch here and you can only refuel the tank once the vehicle is on. To demonstrate, I'll turn on the vehicle by first turning on the radio and turning the tank on. As you can notice, the fuel system is actually pumping now. Once the refueler is off, is no more power going into this, to the refueler. This is purely an on-demand system and is only used when needed. This control panel here is also going to be used for the model's recharge jack. If we notice, I have two prongs that emerge from the bulkhead as well as a switch. This is to recharge the tank. To recharge the tank, I simply fabricated a recharge system in which I have the the recharger here as well as the same type of jacks that are fitted to the vehicle. Charger when it's not charging is in green light and amber when the, when the, when the batteries are getting juiced. To recharge the tank I simply plug the matching color jacks to their location and hit the switch. If you notice when I hit the switch the color changes from green to amber. This indicates that the model is being charged. When I'm ready to run the model, I simply hit the switch. We're now off and I could unplug the recharge system and operate the vehicle. The purpose for mounting the recharge jack as well as all the other devices on the control panel in this location here is because once the rear deck is fixed to the vehicle, it is very easy to get access to via the large engine hatch that we have here in the rear. There will also be, if you notice, I went ahead and drilled out another hole and I still have a lot of more real estate available on this bulkhead for extra functions will be added to this plate as the model progresses. More information on these extra functions are to follow. The aftermarket smoke system fan module has been affixed to the vehicle and has also been patched into the model's electrical circuit. The system, like I mentioned before, is all drop-in assembly and is a really easy component to add to your model. You would need this piece, however, if you were to use the Armortech smoke system along with the Armortech Benedetti sound system. If your vehicle does not is not equipped with the Benedetti sound system, then this smoke fan module is not needed and you can make do with that of the kit original smoke system. As for the system itself, it replaces the subloom that you see here, which is the Armor Tech unit. And the difference is that the Armor Tech unit would attach to these two wires that come off of one of the motors. 
in, instead of connecting the to the wires that come off of these motors, the system instead plugs into the Benedetti sound system and then once again to the smoke system. It's a little bit different of an arrangement, however the instructions are really easy to follow. Installation can be done in under five minutes and the result is very, is very good. I will now test the system. First turn on the radio and then you turn on the tank. Note the LEDs working on the fan control module. And that concludes this project update video for this 1-6 scale ArmorTech M4A4 Sherman tank. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1-6 scale tank builds as well as other 1-6 scale detail components. Thank you.